Hi, my name is Alan Simpson, and this is a quick tutorial on Blazor and Dapper. Um, I'll be using Visual Studio 2019 and Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio during this tutorial, which both are which pretty common in the IT world, but you can Google them if you're not familiar with them. In Visual Studio 2019, I don't have anything too spectacular installed under Tools get tools and features. I think I have uh, the web stuff, uh, ASP.NET and web development checked, and then the uh, .NET Core stuff. I'm using .NET Core 3.1. I've got that checked down here, and that's it. I mean, you can have more than that stuff checked, but that's all I have checked in this community edition right now. And um, let's see what else. Under extensions, I don't have much of anything other than some tools for color. If I uh, search for color, there's color themes I have, um, color theme editor, color coder, just some things that um, they won't impact how you do your work here. I just use them so that you can do this tools, change color theme and uh, pick a color theme. I usually use like material dark, one of these dark ones, but for this video, I'm going to use additional contrast. It just seems to work a little better for the videos, but obviously you can use any color theme you like. All right, so step one, you got to start by creating a Blazor project in Visual Studio. You can do that with File New Project, or if you're not even in Visual Studio yet, you can um, start from, you know, your operating system. Fire up Visual Studio 2019, uh, click Create a New Project, and from these drop downs here, you want C Sharp, All Platforms, and Web. You should see Blazor app. That's what we're going to use. It might say Blazor Server Side app, but Blazor app is fine. Okay, and I'm just going to call it Blazor Dapper CRUD since that's basically what this video is going to be about. And I'll just stick it right on my desktop. You know, in real life, I'd probably put it in OneDrive or something. But, you know, it's it's just a demo thing. So I'll stick it on the desktop. Click Create. Um, you might see some more choices. Again, Blazor server app. There's a client-side Blazor, but this is mid-December, and that's not going to be ready for prime time till mid-June or May or something. So we'll just create with the server-side stuff. Don't pick any extras and uh, follow through and it will create the project. And that project is basically a set of folders that show up in solution, Server Explorer. Now Server Explorer might actually be over on the right like this on yours, that's the default. But I use VS Code a lot where it's always on the left, so I just put it over on the left in Visual Studio too. And this page you can just close by closing its tab. And this is your site. If you choose Build, Build Solution, you should see Build Succeeded. If not, just try it a second time. And then to run it, click this IIA Express button, a Go button. And uh, it might take a little while for the, the first time you do it, but it should open up a web page. And this is basically the sample app you're working with as your starting point. And you can look at the code for that and other tutorials will get into that. I'm not going to get into that stuff. I'm going to try to stay focused on the whole Blazor Dapper side of things for the database connectivity. All right, so as far as your project goes, that's it for starters. You're done with that phase. Um, there's some sample stuff in here we need to get rid of, but this lesson's gone on long enough, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, close out of this, and we'll pick it up in the next lesson. See you there. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to get rid of some of the sample code that every project has just because it doesn't have anything to do with what we're working on. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio again and open up the uh, app we just created, the project we just created. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff in there that we really don't need. If uh, we expand this out in the WW root folder and then the CSS folder, they have Bootstrap an open iconic, which is kind of like a fun, awesome thing. In real life, you're welcome to keep them in there, use them all you want, but I'm just gonna take them out of this particular app because I don't want the extra overhead. And now this site.css 
file is the style sheet for the whole site and again you could use those styles if you want to but I'm just going to get rid of most of them now when you get down toward the bottom here there's a pound blazer error UI a couple of um, style rules with that name that's for a, an error message that actually appears in the browser sometimes when you're doing your development work so leave those in there for now and then down near the bottom there's a couple of media queries for different size screens and you can leave the code in there I mean the blocks in there we're going to take the code out so anyway that's CSS code for uh, you know styling things I'm not going to talk about that in this class we're making a website so obviously we'll need it but I'm certainly not going to try to teach it um, and that's good for now um, we'll save that and let's see what else do we have um, this is sample stuff this weather forecast stuff you can delete that both of those under pages we don't need counter dot razor we don't need fetch data dot razor the index dot razor is actually the home page for the site now you can open that up and um, change its content if you want notice that the app page slash at the top that identifies it as the home page of course you can put any text you want underneath that um, we'll just put in a header and maybe a paragraph explaining what this page is so that when we see it in the browser we know what we're looking at all right and close that up now in the shared folder we need to keep main layout but we don't need to keep all this code in here let's just trim this down to the bare minimum for now so that nav menu tag means that's where the navigation menu is going to show and then this big div here is the header and the body let's just uh, put the app body in main main tags app body is where each page shows what you're, this is really going to be is the uh, layout in terms of the header footer nav bar for now it'll just be the nav menu and the body in nav menu dot razor here we can take out everything again just to keep our code to a bare minimum and then instead of all that code they had there we'll just put in a pair of nav tags and a link to the home page and the link to the home page here is going to be slash it's not the file name here it's the app page name and then home will be the text save that and we can close that up um, what else do we got here? we can close that up make sure you save don't need the style sheet open anymore uh, app settings we don't have to change anything uh, startup uh, let's get rid of using blazer crud dot data and we dumped that weather forecast code so we need to get rid of that whoops get rid of that and uh, that might be it uh, let's uh, see what happens um, looks pretty good close up and save now I'm going to run build build solution to check my work and down here if I see bill one succeeded zero failed so far so good next I can run it by using the go button here might take a few seconds to get going especially the first time you do it and that opens up in a browser because it's a website and now we see the home link which goes nowhere since I'm already on the home page and then the text I put on that index.razor page so that's our starting point now we got rid of all their samples and pretty much down to the bare minimum at this point okay and next we need a SQL Server database to work with and we'll get to that in the next lesson see you there hey it's Alan welcome back all right this course is mostly about blazer and dapper blazer is just part of the whole visual studio net thing but dapper is a third-party package so we'll have to bring that into the project we're working on in order to use it we can do that in Visual Studio by opening Visual Studio and then the project and then when the project is open you want to right click the solution name and choose manage new get packages for solution to get started in here you want to click browse to look for packages and newget.org is your source 
Then in the search box, go ahead and type Dapper, D-A-P-P-E-R. There'll be a bunch of them, but you're looking for this one by Sam Saffron at all, 32 million downloads. That's the one. Click that. Click this checkbox. Click install. And just follow the on-screen instructions saying OK or yes or whatever they ask. And then we're also going to grab um, another one called Microsoft.data.sql client, which is kind of a newer version of the system.data.sql client. This is the one right here we want, Microsoft. System.data.sql client you actually probably have already. You want to grab this Microsoft.data.sql client, and you can read about that online if you want to learn more. But um, just go ahead and click it and install it. And again, you'll go through this little bit. And uh, that's it for uh, packages, for NuGet packages. So uh, we can clear that out, go to installed, and now it says I have two installed, Dapper and Microsoft Data.SQL client. You can close that tab like any other with this little X. And now if you come, come over here and expand out dependencies and packages, you'll see those are now part of this project. Okay, and you don't have to do anything else with them except call on them when needed. All right, and you'll see how to do that later. All right, so our packages are ready to go. Let's move on. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. All right, we're going to need a database now since Dapper is an ORM for databases. Um, I'm going to use SQL Server, like I said, so I'm going to open up SQL Server Management Studio, which you can pick up online anywhere if you don't already have it. It's free. It should be free. Um, and I'm going to connect to my local SQL Server instance, which I think this is the one that actually comes with Visual Studio, but I don't know. I've got a bunch of them on there. But you probably have some version of a... It doesn't matter what you connect to. Just some SQL Server database is fine. The local one is easy because it's just on your computer, kind of a sandbox to work in. All righty. And so we're going to have to go in there and create a new database. So I will, you can see these are some I used for practice and learning. But anyway, um, we'll create a new one for this project. So right click databases, new database. And I'm going to call it um, Blazor Dapper Crud because that's really what this course is about doing a crud stuff with blazer and dapper and i stuck db on the end of that too okay so blazer dapper crud db is the name of the database um now we're going to need some tables so uh let's refresh that and uh, expand it click tables right click tables and choose new table and we're going to it doesn't matter what you put in this thing, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll put in some text. So we'll, if we need a primary key, I'll call it video ID integer. Make sure you click set primary key. And down here you want to make sure it, you know, each one has a unique value. So double click that and it'll number them automatically. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so forth up to a billion, whatever you end up with. All right, and then we need a title for each video. and We'll just make that a var car. I don't know, 128 characters, or var char. You may hear it pronounced. It's a variable length character. Date published. We'll just make a date field so we get a date in there. And just for good measure, we'll have an is active, which is a bit field. So we have a little variety in our uh, data types. We'll let that default to a one, which is true in SQL Server. Uh, even that doesn't matter too, too much what you do. So this will be our database design, or our table, I should say. I'll save that, and we'll call it uh, video, okay? Because each each record, and this is about a, you know, a library of videos. Now, some people might say name it TBL video, especially if you work in a corporation where they have naming conventions like that. But... People in the C-sharp world kind of frown on that sort of thing, so I'm just going to call it video for this example. All right, so now if I refresh what's going on in my database, I have a table named video, 
and this is going to be our sample working table for uh, our dapper and blazer coat. Four fields of different data types just so we have some variety in there. Well, of course this will work with any table. And so that's it for the database. We can uh, close out a SQL Server Management Studio now. And then we'll pick it back up in the next video. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Okie dokie artichokey. We got a database. We got a project. Now we got to link them up. So we'll do that in Visual Studio again and open up our project. And um, let's see now. We have to actually do this in a few places. So let's start by going to uh, SQL Server Object Explorer, maybe. Um, I'll open up over here, and I see I have a connection to my uh, local SQL Express. That's probably this one here with my, yep, there's my database, my Blazor Dapper CRUD DB. Right-click that database name, choose Properties. And then in the Properties sheet, you should see the connection string property somewhere in there. Click in there, you know, press Control A, Control C to copy it. Go back to Solution Explorer and open AppSettings.json, which is your settings for your application. We need to add a connection string setting, so put a comma at the end of the align, allowed hosts thing, and then in quotation marks, type connection strings plural, which is the name of this section, put in a colon and a pair of curly braces, and then inside the curly braces, we'll define one connection string. Put the name in quotation marks. I'm going to use the name SQLDB context, just because that's kind of common. But you can name yours whatever you like. Um, just don't forget the name, because you have to use that name later. All right, then a colon, a pair of quotes. Paste that connection string right in between the quotation marks. And that should do it for that part of it. Go ahead and save that file and then you can close it. Now next up we can create a little class um, that makes it easy to uh, make that connection, call that connection string out of app settings and that will go in the data folder as you'll see most of the data stuff we do will be in the data folder hence the name. Go ahead and right click the data folder and choose add class and you can name it SQL Connection Configuration, and then click Add. Basically, this class just returns the um, connection string out of the uh, appsettings.json file. So inside there, the uh, syntax is going to be public, and then uh, that same name again, SQL Connection Configuration. And then, whoops, space, um, parentheses, and we have to say um, string value equal, I oh know, lambda, and then value equal value. And a semicolon, and then um, public string um, value get. All right, because we're just going to be getting the string out of here. We're not going to set anything. And I got something wrong up here. Um, public string va oops um, I think code correction uncorrected me didn't I have that uppercase before value value that's it right there you do have to watch your case in uh, C sharp you know upper, uppercase lowercase letters are always an issue but that should do it for that so save that close it but you're not done yet Startup.cs is your configuration for your startup. We need to tell it about um, the SQL Server database we have out there. And there's a configure services section here. Get inside those curly braces. And uh, well, we'll start with a simple comment. Just a reminder of what this code's doing in here. And then we will create a variable named um, SQL Connection Configuration again. And that'll be a new SQL Connection. Um, why am I, what am I missing here? Connect, um, oh yeah. 
I took that line out. I have to say, using Blazer Dapper Crud, which is the name of our project, the folder containing all our code, dot data, which is the data subfolder, and that tells it to look for names in that namespace, which is displayed as a subfolder in a Solution Explorer. And now when I start typing SQL connection configuration, it can help because it recognizes that name. And then we need parens and inside we'll say configuration dot get config or get connection string and then open paren close paren quotation marks and then that name you gave the string in app settings.json, which I believe here was SQL DB context. And I'll just copy paste it in there so I don't spell it wrong and end up spending five hours trying to figure out there's one uppercase, lowercase letter difference. All right, and then a semicolon at the end of that line. Press enter, and on the next line, we can set it up as a service using services dot add singleton open paren closing paren and inside there put uh, SQL connection configuration no quotation marks just you're referring to that var above and while we're in the neighborhood um, you can put in a optional switch that helps with debugging if you don't do it now it might ask you later so I just usually throw it in there you can remove it at any time it's just uh, services dot add server side blazer and then um, in parentheses say O oh, or options uh, a lower, that's a lowercase O not a zero O lambda and then we'll just say O dot detailed errors equal true and that just ensures that when you're writing the code and testing and debugging you get a little better uh, a little more detailed error messages about what's going on and that should do the trick okay so that's it for startup.cs you can close and save that anything else you might have open uh, app settings have that open all right and then you can do build build solution and see if you get any errors down there cross our fingers build one succeeded that's good take the next level we'll run it see if it makes it into the browser and it did okay so nothing blew up that's all we had to show for our work so far but nothing blew up so we're good to go let's head over to the next lesson and continue learning blazer dapper crud hey it's alan welcome back all righty then we're all hooked up to our database next we need a model a class that can create objects that represent table rows in other words we need a class where each object it spits out represents one row in our video table and this is going to go in the data folder of our project so right click that and choose add class and now typically what you want to do is name this class with an uppercase first letter and the exact name of what each object represents and in this case that's one video click add and you get a kind of a skeleton class that looks like this so now this class needs an attribute for each field or each column in the underlying table let's open up sql server object explore and peek inside that database at our table again for a reminder that's blazer dapper crud and the table name is video and the columns are here so basically our class just needs to represent that one of each record of that so inside the class we can uh, use code snippet by typing prop prop and pressing tab twice and that gives us that line and then uh, we don't have to change the int but the first one is called video id watch your uppercase lowercase letters you uh, don't want to make any mistakes here and i think the other field is called title and then it's a var car or var char whatever how you like to pronounce it it stands for variable length character field something like that anyway here you just have to say string because we're talking about c sharp dot net types here not uh, 
SQL data types, and so that's a string, and it was title with a capital T. And this, the uppercase, lowercase I'm using here is all pretty standard, so you want to follow suit on that. And all this stuff is very case sensitive, so do be careful of that. Um, we have a date published, that's a date, a SQL date. Actually, .NET doesn't have a date, so what we're going to have to do is call this a date time, and we'll handle the uh, time later on. So it's a uh, object, really, but that's okay. Public date time, we call that date published. And then I think I added a bit field too. So that's a Boolean in uh, C sharp dot net. So uh, we'll do prop tab tab, bool, and then um, what was it? Uh, is active. Okay, so that's it. We have a class named video and each attribute of that class matches a field in the table but we have to use similar data types int string for the title date time for date published and uh, boolean for the sql bit all right uh, we don't really need to be looking at sql server object explorer anymore but let's go ahead and do build build solution see what we get drum roll and we get build one succeeded, zero failed, so we're cool. I'll close that. Let's run the whole thing and see if we get all the way to the browser. We haven't done anything that changes the appearance of the site. We're just checking for errors here. And it did start, so uh, we should be good. Um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, close anything up you have left open and uh, exit out of Visual Studio if you want to. And we'll pick it up in the next lesson. See you there. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Alrighty then. We have a video class where um, we can use it to spin off video objects where each video object represents one row in the video table. So now we need a video service class. And again, that'll go in the data folder because we're concerned about data here. So add class to the data folder and we'll name this one video service. And the services it provides are things that allow you to like insert table rows, read table rows, update table rows, delete table rows. In other words, all the CRUD stuff. All right, so in the video service.cs class, first thing we'll do is we'll um, define our connection string because all the different methods in here that do the actual database operations have to know where this database is. So we'll just type that up real quick here as uh, declare a public video service, um, SQL connection configuration. Uh, I should be underscore configuration. What do I got going on here? Configuration without the underscore and we will get that underscore configuration. All right, and so that'll be the basically the connection for all the different methods in this class that do database operations. All right, let's start by adding a method that will insert a database record or create in the CRUD language. So I'll just put a comment in for starters so you know what this refers to in the future. The C in CRUD stands for create though in SQL it actually implies an insert statement where you're inserting new data into the table. Okay, we need a method. We're going to use the task-based asynchronous pattern. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, that's going to be public async task, and then it's going to return a bool, which will be true after the uh, row has been um, successfully inserted. We'll call this method video insert because it's going to insert one video object into the table. And then inside this method, we'll set up a little using block that connects to the database and inserts the row. So we'll say using, and then we'll uh, give it a name var con, con with just a variable name for the connection, equals new SQL connection. I'm not getting the right uh, IntelliSense support. Ah, got to come up to the top here. We're using those two imported packages, Dapper and Microsoft.data.sql client. So you need to add usings for those two. 
data.sql client, and also we're probably going to also need um, system.data. Doesn't really matter if you put that, I'll just stick it here, system.data. All right, and then we'll go back down to our method and see if we can finish that out. All right, so the using then is varcon equal new SQL connection, open print underscore configuration dot value with a capital V. And now we can say var parameters equal new dynamic parameters, and that's a dapper thing. So if you didn't have the using dapper up there, this wouldn't work. And now we need a parameter for each value being passed in as the insert. Um, we don't need the ID because that's automatic on an insert, but we do need the video title and the other information. So we'll say parameters.add. The parameter name in video service, which is title with a capital T, what we're using, which is video.title, and that will be DB type string. And then we'll copy that and make another one. We'll say Parameters dot add date published. I think that's the second field. Date published, and that's going to be video dot date published, not title. And it's not a string. The DB type is date for that. And then for the last one, it'll be is active. And it'll be video dot is active. And its DB type is, even though we say bit when we're, you know, in inside the table, it's Boolean in this in this code. All right. So, oop, that's is active with a capital A. Now you can either just type up your SQL statement for the insert, or um, I tend to make a lot of mistakes if I do it that way. So sometimes I'll just run out to SQL Server Management Studio, open up that uh, database you're working with. Right click the uh, database name and choose new query. Right click that workspace and choose uh, design query and editor. And then from there you can just um, pick your table, your fields and do it that way. All right, this will be an insert values type of insert. And I can just copy that down to here and change those to parameter names. And uh, all right, maybe I could have typed it up quicker. But again, I'm just using this method because uh, you're less likely to mistype a field name or something if you do it that way. So I'll just uh, then copy paste this into my code. Now this is going to be a string. And we'll make it a constant, say const string, and then just give it a name. We'll call it query. It could be anything. All right. And um, set that to equal at quote, quote, and then just drop your SQL right in there. Okay, and we need a semicolon at the end of that. And then we need to execute that SQL statement. And to do that with Dapper, we're going to say await con, which is the connection string, execute async, and then follow that with parens, um, the name of the string query that contains the SQL. All right, so execute that query string. And then we need a new and then video dot title video dot date published okay the stuff that's being passed in as parameters are going to be uh, fed in for the title and date published and is active to be placed in the database table okay and then we just need a oh yeah command type with a lowercase c colon and then it's going to be a command type with an uppercase C. And that's a dot text to indicate that you're going to be executing a chunk of text as this SQL. And that chunk of text is that string we created named query in the line above. And that should do the trick for that part of it. And next we'll create an iVideo service interface. And an easy way to do that is come up to the initial public class statement and right click that name choose quick actions and refactorings extract interface it'll suggest all that just click OK and now you see you have colon I video service here indicating that's the interface and if you look over in solution Explorer you see iVideoService.cs is that file over there 
Okay, and it returns a Boolean, and I forgot to put that in my code. That goes down just above the uh, closing curly for that method. Alrighty, let's go ahead and build it, see if it blows up there. Nope, build one succeeded. And what the heck, let's run it. And it still runs, so that's good. Um, let's see, anything else we need to do here? I don't think so, but this little method right here that does the insert, basically from here on out, you're going to create one of these for each CRUD operation, create, update, and so forth. But for now, mission accomplished so far, so let's go ahead and close and save everything up, and we will forge on ahead in the next lesson. All right, we've got our database, we've got our database connection, we have a chunk of code that'll insert some stuff into the database. Now we need a page where a human being can sit there and type in something and click a button. And as you might guess, pages go in the pages folder. So we want to right click pages and choose add new item and in a Blazor app, that new item is going to be a Razor component. Okay, if you don't see it, you know, right away, it might be under one of these other headings here. But Razor component is what you want. And I typically name these based on the table, which is video, and the action, which is add or create. So I'm just going to call this page video add. And it's the page people use to type in information to add to the database. Now, if this were a regular website, this might be video add.html with an HTML page. But since we need front end and back end code, we use video add.razor. And then we need to start coding for both the front end and the back end. We start with at using laser dapper crud.data, which is a reference to that data subfolder where all our code for you know database interactivity is located. We need to give this page a name for routing. That's at page, and that will be video add with a um, slash in front. I usually just lowercase the name for the, um, again, they're case sensitive. So the file name is video add with caps, but the um, actual, but the page name, I usually just do an all lowercase. All right, and then you can use dependency injection to at inject iVideo video service, which is the interface and the video service code for the database connection. And we're also going to, at inject navigation manager navigation manager and later in the code we can use that to redirect them to another page when the insert is done all right and then for my form i'll use a uh, edit form a razor edit form that would be edit form model equal at video on valid submit equal at some method i'll create and uh, what mess do i have going on here Okay, the red underline on at videos because it doesn't know what that is. So down here in the code section, I'll throw in an, uh, a quick comment. And we'll create an empty video object as something it understands. So video video equal new video. So basically I'm saying video is an object. Lowercase video is an object um, that's you know, created from the video class. So now it knows what at video means. And then for at video insert, we just need a method. And again, I'll use the the uh, tap pattern that, you know, C Sharp uses now video async task. We'll call it video insert. And then up inside the form here, I'll just go ahead and put in a really simple table of controls. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't do this with, you know, the all the ARIA stuff and the uh, bootstrap classes and all that. I just don't want to clutter up this card with any of that. So I'm just going to make a really simple um, HTML form. It's all pure HTML except for where we say app bind. That's C sharp and that um, tells you what from the video object goes in this input field. And I put required on there to make it a required field. Again, you can, you know, if you're used to doing that with data added annotations and such, that's fine. I'm just going to do everything in the um, HTML here. Um, okay, what do we got here? Video. That last one is is active, and that is a checkbox is active. Whoops. All right, just make sure your uh, uppercase, lowercase letters are correct. 
don't put the required on the checkbox, of course. All right, and um, let's see, we need a couple buttons now. I'll put in another table row. Um, center the stuff in that row. And uh, the first button will be a submit button. Uh, when clicked, that'll trigger the uh, form, and then that on valid submit will be called only if it's a valid form. Um, and then in case they got here by accident, we'll give them a more neutral button with a value of cancel. And if they click that, then we'll just call um, uh, a method called at cancel. And again, I have to use the at signs because this is going to be C sharp code uh, down a little lower here in the code section. That at cancel re will refer to this method, which we'll just call void cancel. And we'll use navigation manager dot navigate to and then go with the routing name of where you want to navigate to. And that's if they canceled. We'll do that too if they did an insert, but we'll do it after we do the actual insert. And to do the actual insert, we'll need to say await video service dot video insert the video. Okay, let me straighten that up. Okay, I think that's it. Let's uh, run this thing and see if it explodes. Um, so far, so good. You have to add slash video add to the end of that URL to get to that page, and and it blows up. Oh, I've seen this error message about a thousand times. We're old pals, so I know it needs to be done on this one. Go back to Solution Explorer and open up uh, startup.cs. Get to that configure services section and add services. Dot add scoped, which makes it you know scoped each session or user. And then we just say uh, iVideo service and video service. Close the angle bracket, close our pair of parens and a semicolon. And let's see if we can get this thing to build. So, well, let me just close and save everything. Let's make sure all our code saved and everything. Let's run this bad boy and see if we can blow it up again. So far, so good. Remember, we have to go to slash video add to get to that page. Hey, it worked. Can we save something? All right, let's say this is called video the first, and we can uh, put in a date there, and uh, click the box, click add, and does it blow up? No, it didn't blow up. Well, wonders never cease. Um, let's see, let's go over to, uh, how about uh, SQL Service Object Explorer, and we'll open up that table. Well, let's refresh that table. You always gotta do that, make sure it's up to date. And up oh, there it is, um, video the first. Pretty cool. So we actually got some data in there, one row. All right, well, that's kind of a success. We can go ahead and close up this data table view. So uh, I think we're good on that video ad page. But let's keep testing. Go ahead and run it again using the IIS Express Go button up there. And this time, um, well, once we get there, you got to remember you have to do slash video add. Press enter. All right, now if I just click add, I get an error message. Please fill out this form or this field. And that's because I put that required in the HTML. But I haven't really covered for all problems. For example, if I click add now, I get a new error message down at the bottom saying an unhandled exception occurred. See browser dev tools. In many browsers, you can just press F12. Here in Chrome, I'll do the three dots, more tools, developer tools. And then if I uh, make sure you click console there, and then I see at the top of this, it's saying, or near the top, must be between 1-1-17-53 and 12-31-99. We need to put a validator on that that keeps it from going out of range. But uh, let's do that in the next lesson. This one went on has gone on long enough. So just go ahead and save and close everything and we'll get right to that in the next lesson. See you there. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Well, we finally got some data into a database table. Um, we blew it up by putting in a, a date that was out of range of SQL accepted dates. So we need to put a little validation in here to uh, prevent that sort of thing. Now, if you're used to using the uh, Razor uh, data annotations for that, that's fine. You can do it that way. I just want to keep my code to a bare minimum, so I'm just going to do it right in the HTML. 
So on the video add page in the input for the date publish field, we just need to add min and max dates. Those can be any dates within the range of acceptable SQL dates. I'll just pick some out of a hat to use as a working example. Obviously, you can use whatever dates are appropriate for your app in this situation. The syntax is a little odd in HTML, though. You have to use um, year first and then uh, month and day, and you use hyphens to separate the components. Now, you might also think, you know, I'll throw a default value in there so it's not that weird looking date. And as soon as you start putting in a value for this thing, you get uh, the infamous red squiggles. And it's saying that you can't use value in this HTML tag because this app bind is already playing that role. So, ixnay on the adding the value. But no biggie because we can just set defaults in the code as the uh, form is being rendered. So uh, for that, we'll go down to the at code section where the C sharp code lives outside of the HTML. There we create a new empty video object named video. Video video equal new video. And now we can create a method that executes as the page is opening or you know, as it's being sent or rendered or however you want to look at it. But within there, we want to set our, well, let me put in a comment here so later we, we remember what this is about. It executes, you know, as the page is loading, so to speak, and you can use it to set default values in the page. So we already created an empty video object, so let's create a date time variable, and we'll call it default date. That's just a name I made up, equals new date time and you can use any date as a default. I'll just pick something like uh, the year 2000, December 31. And that actually will look like a little placeholder in the uh, in the data entry field. All right, so then that video we just created, its date published attribute will be equal to that default date. And now since this is a brand new video being entered into the database, We'll assume it's active, meaning nobody's ever deleted it. So I'll just set the video that is active equal to true. All right, so now when the form renders, these default values should show up in the uh, date and uh, is active checkboxes. So we got to run it to see if that's going to play out. So let's close and save and run it. And that should take us to our home page. And again, we need to navigate to slash video add from there. And now we can put in another video. We'll need to give it a title, of course, but you can see those default values are already set. So we can pick the, um, we can just keep the default values or change them, whatever you want to do. Um, this is a, uh, you know, a date box. So it has all this stuff in Chrome. It looks like that. It might look different in another browser. But basically, you can go ahead and uh, set whatever date you want in there. Just don't use that 0001 date. 1992 will work. I'll click add. It, it didn't blow up. So let's go back to SQL Server Object Explorer and take a look in our table. Uh, don't forget to refresh the table. All right, so uh, databases, open that. Uh, tables, right click and choose refresh and then look at its data. And we should see two rows in there now. And again, the first one looks like it's missing its key, but just click around, that'll probably come in. All right, so there's our two videos that we've put in there so far. So far, so good. So we have a page that'll insert videos. All right, so most of the really unpleasant legwork is done. In the next lessons, we'll uh, flush it out and get to the other aspects of CRUD. All right, see you there. Well, we have our database, and we're able to get um, stuff into it from our web page. But the way we did it might raise some eyebrows in some IT departments. The way we did it was we stuck the SQL right in with the C-sharp code, which isn't a crime or anything, but um, it's not always the preferred method to mix your SQL in with your C-sharp code like that. A lot of people would say, leave the uh, SQL inside the database. And so I'll, I'll show you now how to do that need to go back into uh, SQL Management Studio and that database. 
and then you can put the sequel in a stored procedure, sometimes called a stored proc or sprock for short. But anyway, you go to uh, programmability. Now, if you expand uh, stored procedures and system stored procedures, these are a bunch of existing procedures. Sys.sp underscore, don't touch those. That's just part of SQL, and it's not for you to mess with. To create your own stored procedure, right-click Stored Procedures, choose Stored Procedure, and you get this sort of template for a stored procedure. Down here is where you can put your SQL code, and you can either just type it out, or what I like to do is right-click and choose Design Query and Editor, and then you can just uh, kind of, you know, put it together interactively you're just less likely to make a typo if you do it this way i'll change the type to insert values so it becomes an insert statement click ok and that pops it into the stored proc now we just have to finish it out we'll copy this side of the values and paste it on that side of the values and change these to parameters with an at in front of each name Okay, so you can see how that's insert into video. The title, date published, is active values. And then those will be the placeholders for what we're putting in there. Then you have to name your stored proc. I suggest dbo.sp followed by the table name, which is video in this case, an underscore and the action, which is insert. And then we just have to say what those incoming parameters are. We have to define them in terms of their SQL type. So um, we can go up here and look at the um, structure of the table so we don't get those wrong. We see the uh, first one is a VARCAR 128, so we'll put that in uh, VARCAR 128. You need a comma after that, and then the next field is, we'll say is at date published, and that's a date, comma, um, at is active, and that's a bit, no comma after the last one. And that'll do it. Now to create this procedure, we actually have to execute this. And we see this down here. And if we refresh over here, we'll see that stored proc there. Now we don't need to keep this. You can just close that and choose no, because that was just to create the procedure. If I right click that and choose modify, I can see that code again to redo the procedure, but I don't need to do that here. The important point is now that I have a stored procedure named SP video insert in the database and I can call that from my C sharp code rather than putting the SQL code in the uh, C sharp code. So now let's go back to the project that is in Visual Studio, the code side of things, and go back to that uh, video service class where we have that code. All right, and here's where we use the um, insert right in the code. Let's, um, I'm gonna keep that in there, but I'll comment it as the raw SQL method and comment it out so it doesn't do anything, but I'll leave it in there so that when you download this, if, if you wanna do it that way, you can still see that sample of code. But the way we'll actually do it is we'll, um, just pass the parameters to the stored proc. To do that, we'll do await space con dot execute async sp video insert, capital I is the name of that stored procedure. Parameters here, just so we pass in the parameters. And the command type on this one won't be text this time, it'll be command type dot stored procedure, and don't forget the semicolon. All right. So let's save our work and close up and run this thing again. And we should get to the home page and eventually, yes, and then it's slash video add to get to that video add page and try putting in another video. We'll call this one video the third. And again, we'll just give it some kind of a date. Doesn't matter what the date is so long as it's, you know, reasonable and within our data validation and click add did i do something wrong is it going to blow up let's see how it goes oh went back to the home page wow well maybe that was actually a success um, let's go to sql server object explorer in visual studio drill down into our little database we're working with 
the videos table or video table I should say and um, look at its data and uh, yep there's three of them in there now remember to uh, click around if you any data looks miss seems to be missing all right so we have three rows in there now and nothing really changed I mean we're doing the same thing we did before it's just that we reworked the code a little bit so that we're using a um, stored procedure inside SQL Server to do the uh, insert we don't have any SQL code showing in our C sharp code I've left it in there commented it out for future reference in case you want to do it that way but most people are probably gonna say use the stored procedure method all right you can save and close up now and we'll pick it up in the next lesson okay now we're gonna look at the R in CRUD to read data or it would be a select in SQL so basically we'll start just by listing whatever rows are in the table at the moment we'll use uh, store procedures again so I'll start off in SQL Server Management Studio create a stored procedure this will be a simple select because all we're doing is pulling all the rows out of the table I'll use the lazy uh, query designer to do this and uh, we don't need to uh, pull in any parameters since we're just sending data out so no parameters and we'll name it dbo.spvideo underscore get all all right and when I I'll check that it looks like it'll be okay execute it and that executes and now if I refresh the stored procedures there it is get all and now if we use a field like is active to logically delete rows without physically deleting them you could create another stored procedure this time we'll select rows where is active is true or in this syntax that would be is active is one and once again we don't really need to pull in any parameters since we're just sending data out and we'll use dbo.spvideo underscore get active as the name of this one execute that SQL to create the stored procedure and then when we refresh we'll see its name in there with the others that just creates the stored procedure so you don't need to save that query you can just close that and not save it next we'll need some code so out of SQL management studio and back into visual studio now the codes gonna be pretty much the same as what we've seen so far in fact you're gonna see this same pattern every time with just the wording being a little different but uh, let's go ahead and open up our project and we need to get right into that video service dot cs class where all those uh, methods for interacting with the database are going to live all right so we can collapse down the ones we have in there make some room and uh, we'll call this one video list let's make it a public async task now this time we want it to return a list of items so um, not a boolean so let's say it's an I enumerable uh, video object so you need the uppercase V to refer to the video class okay and um, that will be like I said video list okay so first thing we'll do in this method is create a empty list of video objects to populate from the table now if you have any trouble using this I enumerable make sure you have using system dot collections dot generic up there in your using statements this will be a list of video capital V and videos lowercase v will be the name of the actual list I need this using statement I'll just copy and paste that out of another one and now to populate that list you could either use get all and show all the ones even the ones that have been marked for deletion or it could use get active um, you know, and show everything including the ones that have been marked for deletion I'll leave you to your own devices on that the only point is you got to make sure you get the name right um, I think I named them SP video get all and SP video get um, active yeah I'll use this one SP video get all uh, I would just execute that one and then again it's going to be a command type of uh, store procedure okay so after that executes then videos will be a list of um, all the videos in the video table 
And so we just need to return that to the caller and that would go underneath the using. And that will just be return videos in a semicolon. Okay, now we need to grab this name, this method signature that we just made, and we need to go stick that in iVideo service. So just go open that one. You can paste in the whole line and just knock off the public async. Everything in our interface is public. Oops, I'm getting the squiggly. I need to uh, add that using. I can do it this way. For ienumerable, you need this uh, using system.collections.generic. So I'll pop that in there, and now it's up there at the top. And that should be it for that. We can close and save that. Now that was all under the hood stuff, so now we need a page. Right-click the Pages folder, choose Add New Item, and we'll use a razor component for the page, and I'll name it Video List. Click Add, and the new page opens, ready for editing. They always start off with this H3 heading, but you really need more than that. So um, let's just uh, scoot that down. And we have to tell it first that we're using stuff from that data folder. So that's at using blazer dapper crud dot data. That makes it, you know, aware that there's a namespace full of code in there. And then um, we can say at page and give this some kind of a name that starts with a forward slash. Um, this is going to be the routing name, how you link to it. I always use all lowercase letters and always start out with a slash. I think it's just easier um, to remember. And then we need to inject the um, video service. That's called dependency injection and allows us to use methods in there without instantiating an object. And now for the body of this page is pretty much all going to just be HTML. I'll make a link to the page for adding videos since this is where they may decide they want to do that. And now we have to say if videos equal equal null, meaning that um, it's not ready yet, just show this loader image. Okay, and that's just, you know, a loader that spins. It's probably not going to last long with this tiny thing, but never hurts to put it in there. And then we'll create a table to show the uh, the data. And I'll just use a simple HTML table. You can do it however you want. This will be the table header row. Appears once at the top of the table. And then for each video in the list we're passing back, this is a little razor syntax for looping through those curly braces. We'll need a row for each video. And in the First cell of each row will show that um, I edit PNG image. In the second column will show the video title. And the third column will show the um, uh, date published. And then in the fourth column will show, if the video is marked as active, we'll show that green check.png image. What did I do here? If video, get the, ba, ba, ba. what did I got here? All right. If video is active, show green check. Else, show, whoops, red X. And then that's the end of that row. What a mess. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. So, now we need to populate that table with some data. So, we'll need a list of video objects. Again, I'll use I enumerable. We'll create an empty I enumerable list named videos for starters. And then we'll have a function that executes as the page is initializing. And that one will uh, populate the videos list, which will in turn cause it to populate the table. Initialized async. Okay, so videos equal, um, it's going to be await. And then it's going to be the video service dot video list, I called it, I think. And that is a reference to the video list method in video service dot CS that returns the list of videos using that SP get all. I had a little typo there. Looks okay now, though. Let me save it and I'll run it. And as always, it will open to the home page. To get to that one, I have to type add slash 
video list to the oops um why didn't that come back what did i forget what did i forget oh if videos how did that get to be video service all right this is a video list dot razor videos equal equal null in other words while it's waiting for it to load it shows that image is all all right so again slash video list come on video you can spell hey it worked it's really ugly but it worked the images aren't showing there's my add a video link and it takes me to video add all right let's clean up this horrible looking mess all right for these images i see it's using this tilde slash business i'll just switch that to dot dot slash in front of the images folder everywhere no, that should work. Let me run it again, see how it looks. All right, drum roll. Home page, didn't blow up at least, and slash video list. And it looks horrible, but at least you can see the pictures. Okay. I don't think we need to see 12 o'clock a.m. on all the date published, so we'll go back and we'll put a dot two short date string on date published. And um, save that, take a look. There's our home page. If I go to video list, better, the dates are better. I mean, it's still really ugly, I know, but the basic functionality is there. It loops through the table and shows each row. And the home link still works. And again, the reason it's ugly is because I just threw in the raw HTML. There's no styling at all in there. And I don't really want to get into that in this course, but in the next lesson, we have to at least make it presentable, so I'll spend a little time in the next lesson just throwing in a little CSS to make it so it's not such an eyesore at least. All right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to back off from Dapper just a little bit uh, so we can talk about Blazor components and how you use them to formulate a website. I don't want to get heavy into CSS or Bootstrap or anything, so we're just going to make it presentable, okay? All right, now if you uh, open the shared folders, this main layout.razor is the basic template for all the pages in the site. We see that nav menu tag, that's what's showing that sidebar, and where you see that app body, that's what's showing the page. If we add a new item, razor component, and call it header, we can make that the header that appears on every page and you can design it however you want. Now you could just have put it right inside the um, main layout too if you wanted. I'm just gonna separate each component here in its own little file as a way you can approach it. So this component will be the, pay, the header of each page and I'm just gonna keep it a little bit of basic HTML. We don't need any code in there, but you could it could have its own code too because it has its own code block there. All right, let's add another item and call it uh, footer. And I already copied the code from the other one, so I'll just paste it in here and we'll just use footer tags instead of header tags and we'll just throw some text down in the footer. And now for the navigation menu, I already cut that down pretty good, but let's add a link to the video list page I'm pretty sure I named video list. I'm going to run this, see how we're doing so far. And er, content for, oh, I do this one a lot. I blame the spell checker. Anyway, component file names have to start with an uppercase letter. I have lowercase for footer. So I'll just uppercase the file name on that shared component. And while I haven't really put in any code to show these things and I just would like to check my work at this point so I'm going to run it again and if it doesn't blow up we can forge ahead and there's the home page in the browser so we're good we can move on so now we need to open main layout.razor because that's the template that defines every page and we just put in a tag for each component and you can use XML syntax where you just open the tag Put in the component name, don't forget the uppercase letter, and close it with a slash greater than. Okay, let's save everything and close up. I'm not sure why that red squiggly is still there, but it'll probably go away eventually. I think it's there because it was originally lowercase. All right, let's uh, run that, or build it and run the whole thing. I see no build problems, we'll run it. 
And drum roll, we have, well, all text is there. There's the header text, the nav bar, the body, and the footer. And finally, we'll throw in some bare bones CSS just to make it quasi presentable without loading up the HTML with a million CSS class names. And I'll just kind of power through this real quick. Obviously, you can design your page however you want. I'm not here teaching how to design it or even saying this is an example. I just want to get some code in there to make it quasi-presentable. So uh, we'll make the header, nav, and footer all fixed positions so that they don't scroll anywhere. Give it a little color so we can see it on there. The header will be the full width of the page, and I'll just pick 48 pixels as a height. I made the heading text inside there in H1, so... I'll make its line height equal to the um, header height so it's centered vertically and then I'll take off all the margins except the left margin. I'll leave it 10 pixels. The nav bar will put right under that 48 pixel tall um, header and the A tags inside there will display as blocks and uh, center them. The footer we'll just put down at the bottom of the page, full width of the page. And again, I'll just pick a random height out of a hat, 32 pixels. Run it, and, well, it looks pretty horrible, but we're getting there. All right, let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Not so sure that line height's working for me, but let's, um, we need to put some margins around the main content so that it clears the header, footer, and nav bar. Take a look at that. And um, uh, uh, I still got something bad going on with this header. What's going on here? Oh, this should be top zero. Um, okay, so let's uh, take a look at that. All right, decent. I mean, we clean it up some more, but it basically works. We got to fix those images. We'll work on these forms a little bit. And again, I'll just power through it using simple CSS. You probably don't want to watch me type this stuff up, so I'll just speed it up. And if you're bored with it, you can actually skip the rest of this. It's We're not doing any dapper in this lesson. All right, I think that should do the trick. It's not going to win any beauty contest, but at least it gives you a sense of what could be. All right, uh, forms are clean, page layout's good. Let's get back to the real topic at hand, which is dapper, and we'll pick that up in the next lesson. See you there. All right, we've done our C in CRUD and our R in CRUD to create or insert a record in R to read. Now we need to allow people to edit, to make changes. So we need two things, really. We need a read to read a record so they can look at it on the screen. And then we need the update to allow them to save any changes they make there. So let's go and start with the stored procedures. And I'll do that as usual in uh, SQL Server Management Studio. The first one we'll name dbo.spvideo, follow the pattern of the other names, underscore, and we'll call it get one, because they're gonna go grab one video row to edit. We do need to pass in a parameter, and that would be the ID of the row to edit, the video ID, but in this code we'll just refer to it as ID. And so then my uh, SQL statement is gonna be a select where video ID equals that ID. Um, and again, if you'd rather not type it out, um, you can use this little query designer thing. It's just a way to avoid typos. And so we'll say video blah, 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 equal at ID. Click OK, and that should put the uh, SQL statement into the SQL code here. It does, so now we can click Execute. And uh, that should create that stored procedure. And remember, you have to refresh the list to see it. And there it is as a video get one. 
Now we need an update stored procedure and that's going to be similar to video insert in terms of parameters. So I'm going to right click that and modify it. I'm going to say create procedure and instead of video insert. This one will be video update. Um, we do need to pass in the ID of the record being updated. So that's at video ID and that's an int. Remember that's a SQL syntax up there. We don't want insert. Let me just take this whole thing out and I'll design a new query. Okay, and uh, video table, title, blah, 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 where video ID equals something. Uh, ID or something. Let's just put a one there for now. Take that off. Change type to update values. And that's what we want right there. Okay. Click OK. It goes in there. Now we just have to flesh it out. Title equal at title. Remember these names here will just match the names up in the uh, parameters a few lines above this code. And publish will be at date. Publish is active will be at is active. And one will be at video ID. And I do believe that will work for our update statement. I don't know why I still got a squiggly there, but uh, it's wrong. Okay, so let's execute that. And it said I'm good. Let's refresh. And we should see video update. There it is. Okay, we can dump this SQL. We don't need, we don't need any of these. Uh, that we use to create the stored procedures. All right, so we have a video get one and a video update now. And the video update you can see is just a straight update thing. And uh, now we can call those from code to do our get and update. So let's leave SQL Management Studio. Go back to our uh, Visual Studio app. So in the code, the get and the update will both be video services. So they go in the data folder under video service.cs. And every one of these CRUD things is going to end up there. Now the order of them in here really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to add this new one under video list. We'll start off with a little comment for future reference so we know what it's about. And now this syntax is going to be basically the same as the other methods in here. Public async task. It's going to return a video object um, because we're you know we're we're editing one video and so we'll call this uh, video get one since you can name it whatever you want it doesn't have to be that specific name all right and now uh, we need to pass that an integer ID so it knows which row to get out of the table inside here we'll start by creating a an empty video object and we'll name it video okay so the video object named video is going to equal a new video object. So it doesn't have any data in it or anything yet. It's just the skeleton for a video, a video row. All right. And now we're going to need some parameters. So we say var parameters equal new dynamic parameters, which is a dapper thing. Oops, I forgot the parens. To those parameters, we will add a parameter that will be the ID being passed in. And that's defined as ID in the first line. And then the database type is going to be integer 32. And now we need this using code to get our uh, database open and uh, get our connection going. We'll just put all that in there. And instead of videos, it's going to be video singular because we're only returning one. And for this sort of thing, we would use um, query first or default in Dapper, I think. So let's say uh, Query first or default async. We know we're only getting one record, so query first or default works for that. And then we have to say of type video. And then we put in our parens and we say which stored procedure, and that's going to be SP video get one. And then after that, we need to have our uh, parameters, comma parameters, and then comma the, the command type business. And again, we're calling it stored procedure and we're returning video, one video, not videos. All right, so that's good for the get one uh, method. Let me just do a quick build, make sure it doesn't blow up. 
good to check your work off and you know uh, this has taken a while which isn't a great sign let's see if it's going to blow up here i don't see any errors up there well, build one succeeded all right let's forge ahead the update's going to be very similar to the insert so i'm just going to copy this whole insert method and paste it in down below that uh, video get one we just created okay um we can collapse some of these just to unclutter a little and now we're working down here and this is going to be our update method so we'll just put a comment into that effect obviously we need to rename it video update will be a good name for that one. Oh, i see a little typo in my comment i'll fix that too um, video id so this is our sql update um this is all good. We do need to pass in an ID though to identify which video to update. So we'll just add that as a parameter. We're passing in the whole video object. So we'll say the video ID is just the video ID and that's always an int or um, it would be dbtype.int32. We are not gonna execute SP video insert. We're going to execute SP video update. Uh, these comments down here were just as a reminder if you didn't want to use stored procedures, but I'm going to use stored procedures for all these, so I'll just knock those comments out. And then the return true is the same. That'll return true when the update is complete. Now, a lot of times it's kind of hard to wrap your head around all this stuff when you're first learning, but if you come in here to videoservice.cs, you, you start to notice it's the same pattern over and over again. You know, there's a, a method to get the connection string and then a method for each database operation. And let me make sure I clean up my comments a little bit in here so that, you know, when you're looking at this later, trying to remember how it all works, the comments should help you figure out what each um, method is doing. Okay, so anytime we add methods to video service, we need to... Uh, add their signatures to the interface iVideo service. So let's grab the get one um, method signature, go into iVideo service, paste that in under the video list one, and public, we don't need public async and an interface, just the uh, task, the type, the name is video get one. Oh, I forgot, we're passing in the video ID of the, what is it, int ID. Yeah, we're passing in an integer ID. So um, after the name, we want int space ID, ID, capital I, all right? And then our semicolon. And then we basically do the same thing for video update. We'll copy, I uh, won't we'll copy the whole thing. We just need this part here. Copy that out of video service, go over to iVideo service and paste that in and put in the semicolon and that's good. All right, so let's close and save everything and do a build. We don't have a page for this yet, but let's just see if it's gonna blow up. We'll build, see if we can run it. And well, at least it didn't blow up yet. Okay, so. Uh, it's taking a sweet time, but it looks like it's going to go. Let's uh, click the videos, go to that page. Uh, there we see our little spinny thing. And uh, all right, so it's running. Now we need a page to actually go in and look for or to actually edit an existing video. So we'll get to that in the next video. Okay, see you there. All right, now that we have all the mechanics for pulling out a record and um, editing it and saving those changes, we need a page to handle that. Now it's gonna be very similar to our page for inserting data. In fact, so much code is gonna be the same. Rather than create a whole separate page for updating data, maybe we could just take our video add page and we'll copy that and um, create a new page called video add edit. And we'll use that both for adding and editing and then once that's working, we'll get rid of the video add.razor page. All right, so we're going to have to change the um, routing name to video add edit, and we have to pass in the ID of the video we want to edit. 
Now you might say, well, then how are you going to use it for adding new ones which don't have an ID? And our, our logic for that will be if we pass in a zero for the ID, that means insert. Otherwise, we're doing an edit. Okay, but other than that, now most of this HTML code is going to be the same. So we don't really need to change it much. Maybe just the title and the button text, but it doesn't seem worth it to repeat all the other code just for that little bit of difference. We'll handle the differences programmatically down here in the C sharp code. So let's start with, okay, we're going to need a different title and different button text, depending on whether they're adding or editing. So we'll start with a couple simple variables and we'll populate them on the assumption that they're going to do an insert. So the page title by default will be add a video and the button text will be add. Okay. And we'll just go with that. Now down here, we'll make a decision about what to really do. We have inside this uninitialized method. If they passed in a zero, we'll go ahead and stick with this um, default code for a new video. So say if ID is zero, I dictionary, I don't think so. ID is zero. We'll put in our curly braces and then else. All right. So, oh, oh, I see what I did. I forgot to pass in that parameter of ID. So let's come up here, put in a parameter and that's going to be the incoming ID. And so we'll say public int because it's integer ID and we'll just do a get and a set. So if the ID is zero, stick with what we were doing before and just make a default video. Otherwise, we want to get that um, video with that ID. So the video we're getting is going to be um, something we get from videoservice.get1 based on the ID we passed in. And since we're doing an update, we'll change the page title to edit video and the button text to save or update or whatever you want to use. It's just the word that appears on the button. Okay, it's still complaining about my await here. And, um, oh, wait, I'm going to use an async. Oh, my uh, public override, override void is an async. So let's uh, change that to public override async task, not void, async, and then on initialized async. And that should do the trick if I'm lucky. I don't see anything bad here. Now we have to uh, make those titles and that button thing work. So instead of showing at a video up here, we'll show at page title, which is the, you know, that parameter. And instead of the button text being add, we will change that. Where's that button? There's that button to ampersand button text. Take a quick look here. I don't see any more being yelled at. So now we do say here on valid submit video insert, but it may actually be an update. So instead of using that um, name, let's just say video save, and then we'll decide what which we're going to do down here. So we need to change the name of this to um, video save. And then we'll decide what we want to do with it. We can say if that video, if the video ID of the video being passed in is zero, then definitely do an insert. Get my curlies in there. And when you're done with, well, let's put those in there and then go to video list. We don't need to go all the way back to the home page. Okay, so the video ID is zero, insert otherwise else. Um, do basically the same thing, but do an update, not an insert. So let me just grab this line here, change insert to update. And then we are going back to the video list page either way. So we'll take that navigation thing and stick it under the if. All right, let me just format that, make sure it looks okay. All right, and then just let me throw in some comments for future reference so that we know what we're looking at when we refer to this in the future. And certified is zero. Otherwise, if it's not zero, we're going to do an update. 
And what else here now? Oh, we're going to navigate back to video list. Even if they cancel, we're not going to go all the way back to the home page. There's no need for that. Okay, I think this page is done. All right, no guts, no glory. Let's build it. So far, so good. Let's run it. Thinking about it. And go to videos. Uh, yeah, there they are. If we click edit on one, I'll clear the checkbox. Click update. Oh, it's marked as deleted, so that worked. Uh, let's try a different one. I'll change the date on this one. Uh, I'll just use these little spin buttons for the heck of it. Click update, and that worked. If I go back here and make this active and click update again, it's active again. If I click add a video, I get an empty thing. I click cancel, I come back, click add a video again, put in a video title and a date. And again, this is just messing around stuff, testing things out. And add, and there's the fourth video. So cool. It works. And really, we're done because you don't really need a, a physical delete thing in here if you've got that is active field to handle that logically. But since I did say it was a CRUD course, I guess I should uh, do the D part. So we'll get to that in the next lesson. All right, see you there. Now, as I've mentioned before, you don't really need a delete method to physically delete records if you're just going to mark them for deletion. But in the interest of being complete, we'll go ahead and put in a delete option in case for some reason you have to physically delete records. All right, so I'm going to go into SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to open up that database and go to my stored procedures. And rather than start from scratch, I'll right click SP Video Get One, modify it, and we'll use that as the starting point for our delete procedure. So when that comes in, we'll change the alter to create because we're going to create a new procedure and its name is going to be delete, not get one. So we'll put that in there. We're still going to pass in the ID. Now we don't want to select based on that. We want to delete based on that. Once again, I'll use the uh, designer to create the query just to minimize typos. And all we need on this one is the video ID. And it has to be a video ID with a value. We'll just throw one in there for now. Okay, and I change the type to a delete. Delete from video where video ID equal one. Go ahead and put that in. But change the one to at ID. And I believe that'll do it. Let's go ahead and execute that query. And I didn't get any complaints down below. So if I refresh, oops, refresh this, there's SP video delete. And we don't need to save this query. So just close that out. Okay, back to Visual Studio to write some code to support that stored procedure. So into our project we go. And the steps will be the same as always. We're going to have to go into the data folder, videoservices.cs. And there's all our existing methods for adding and editing and all that stuff. So we just need to add another method to this. I'll um, collapse some of these. So they're out of the way. Let's see, for the delete, we basically need to pass in the ID. So let's shrink these all down. And um, let's go ahead and say public async task bool. It'll just return a true when the deletion is complete. So boolean's fine. And we'll call this one video delete. And we will pass in the ID of the video to delete as an integer. Okay, and now we need some stuff from get one like uh, these three lines that do the parameters and then set up the connection, pop that in there. Now we can't use that same SQL statement or that same um, call. We need something more like in video insert. So let's see, uh, let me collapse this down and get into video insert there and Copy this await, and we'll put that one down into our video delete. And then we'll paste that in here into video delete. The name of the stored proc we're calling is 
video delete, not video insert. Oops, I went the wrong way there. Uh, video delete, quote, comma, parameters. Alrighty then. So now we still have a squiggly because this needs to return something. Just return true. It's good enough. Don't forget about iVideo service. We need to add this to uh, iVideo service. So copy that out, go into there, paste it in, and uh, delete the public async. Everything in the interface is public. And that should do the trick there. Okay? So I think we can close up and save everything and see if anything is going to blow up. Nope. All right, and so now to allow people to delete, we can add a, another column to this table with a little trash can icon. When they click that, we'll take them to a page where they can confirm they want to delete, and if they confirm, we'll physically delete it. Okay, so back to uh, Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and create the confirmation page. So I'll right-click Pages, Add, New Item, Razor Component, and we'll name it Video Delete. And then um, it's going to have a lot of the same code as like video add or video add edit. So let's open up video add edit and grab all that code at the top, I guess. They're not going to really be editing, but we can use some of this code. Paste it into video delete.razor and then tweak the code so this works as a deletion thing. Instead of video add edit, it will be video delete. And we'll still pass in the integer ID of the item to delete. Instead of app page title, we'll just title it accordingly. Throw in a little warning text so that um, hopefully they don't delete it anyway. Again, it's better to just mark them for deletion, but we'll go ahead and do this method in this just for the sake of complete completeness. There is no undo. All right, we don't need an edit form because we're not editing anything. The button should say, well, in fact, it doesn't even need to be a submit. We'll just make it a button with a value of um, delete. And when they click it, we'll call a, a method called delete. Let me just grab that and paste it in there. And we'll change that to at delete. And I think it's looking pretty good. Let me, s I don't have those um, methods down there yet, but let me save what I have. And then we're gonna open up video add edit. Oh, it's actually open over here already on this tab. And then I'll just start swiping chunks of code. For sure, I'm gonna have to uh, instantiate a video because I'm gonna show one on the screen and I need the parameter with the uh, ID and I missed that line. Let's see what do we got here. Let me just grab, um, we need that. Let me just grab all of this and then I'll go put this over in there. There's my parameter. I need the public imp business. I don't need those two strings. I do need the um, method and a pair of curly braces. All right, now we need some code inside that async. I'll go back to video add edit and see what I can find. Um, I do need to wait for the um, video to load and appear on the screen so they know what they're deleting. So I'll stick that one in there. And then back to video add edit again. And we will grab this uh, video save method and go paste that into video delete underneath our uninitialized async. Um, while I'm here, though, let me change this comment. It doesn't really set a default. And also up here on this on click, I'm calling at delete. So the name of this should be delete, not video save. We're not really looking at the video, that video ID like that. And this one, um, we just want to say await video service video dot video delete and we're only passing in that ID. So it should delete just that one row and we don't need the else. All right, and I'll just tidy that up a little bit, make sure I don't have any major errors in there. 
And now we still need an event handler for the cancel button. I have code for that in video add edit 2. So let me just go swing over back to that one and I'll copy that code from video add edit and paste it back into a video delete here. And I want to navigate to video list even if they do delete. So I'll copy that up there. And I think we may be done with this one. Eyeball it real quick. And let's take it for a ride. Build it. No problema. Uh, run it. And let's see what we get here. We'll go to videos. There's my little trash cans. If I point to one, it says delete. If I click it, it takes me to the delete a video page. If I change my mind, I can click cancel. That takes me back to the list and that video is still there. If I try it again, click the trash can and this time I choose delete. I'm sent back, but now the video is gone because I deleted it. I see I missed the column heading for the trash can. So let me go, I'll close this back up and go back to video list and um, put that column heading in. That's just a TH and a HTML table. Okay, and um, we can close and save that. And I also noticed in the video delete that razor page, we don't need input boxes because they're not entering any data. So let's just take out the input tags and we'll just show the text of each row. Okay, uh, oops. And um, same thing for video public, video date published. We don't need an input. We'll just put the data. And uh, boy, I made a mess of that, didn't I? And I don't think we need this is active checkbox. If you're physically deleting things, you're probably not even going to have that. And that should just about do it for that page. All right, so let's save our work and run it again, see how we do. Click videos. The delete column has a heading, that's good. We'll click a trash can. And now it looks like it doesn't have input boxes, but I see that 12 a.m. is there. I guess I forgot to put that to short date thing, whatever it's called. Let me cancel out of that. Come back into my code and add dot to, what is it? To short date string or something? Yeah, that one, to short date string, paren paren. Run it again. And when we get to the list of videos, we'll click one and there we can see the times that were moved from that. And so everything should be good. A couple last quick tests. We'll click cancel here. We'll delete it again. This time we'll click delete and it is gone. And if, can we still add a video? Click add a video. We'll call this one video infinity or something and just accept the defaults, I guess. Click add and we should see it at the bottom of the list and we do. So that's it. We're done with all our crud. So um, close everything up, save everything. And uh, come over one more video. We'll tie up some loose ends. Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. All right, before I wrap this up, I just want to talk about getting the code. Um, I put all the code for the finished project out in on GitHub. So you can just go out to github.com and it's under slash Alan Simpson me slash blazer dapper crud. And then if you like, when you get there, you can just um, download the whole thing as a zip file. It'll go to wherever you normally send your downloaded files, probably your downloads folder. Okay, then go open up that folder. I'm using Chrome here, so that's why it looks the way it does. Once you're in your downloads folder, you can extract all from the downloaded zip file. And then um, open the extracted folder. And inside, you'll see a folder with the same name. Open that one until you get to this folder that has a solution file in it. You want to go up exactly one folder level from there using the up one folder button or um, its name in the address bar. And then when you see that folder name by itself in its own folder, uh, right click it, choose rename, and just get rid of the hyphen master at the end. There's no need for that. And um, press enter. And now you can just use that as your working one. Now, I already took my 
original off the desktop so I can just drag this one right out to the desktop and move it there. Then just open it as you would any other Visual Studio project. You can open the folder and double click the solution file or you could open Visual Studio first, go through the open there and navigate to it and open the solution file. Now it does, um, it did come from the internet so you might get some warnings about trustworthiness and there's t actually two projects in there so you, you might get two warnings. Um, don't worry about that but let me tell you why there's two projects in there. The first one in the Blazor Dapper CRUD folder is the project exactly as we discussed it in the course. So if you go through there all those files should look pretty familiar but You'll need to update those uh, packages. And also remember that appsettings.json has my connection string in it. And that may not be your connection string. So make sure you understand that and can get that together on your own. Because there's nothing I can do to help with that. Now this Blazor Dapper SQL one is really just all the SQL code used in the course. And so if you want to set up exactly the same uh, table and uh, stored procedures is in the course you can find that code right in here and just run it in within your own database each would just be a SQL query like new query in um, SQL Server Management Studio and then execute it from there now this CRUD code we've been talking about is kind of the same thing table after table so I wrote a little code generator where you can tell it a project name and then go grab the create statement that you use to create a table that you want to write this code for. And the reason why I want you to actually go get that statement is so that, you know, the code generator here knows exactly what's in the table. And find the table in a management studio, right click it and choose script table as create to new query editor window. And that'll give you the exact SQL code for defining the table. Copy that, not the whole thing, just the create statement here. You don't even need the primary key part. Copy that, paste it in here, and click, well, let me show you, that's all in there, okay? And then click go, and then it'll write all that code we talked about in the videos by filling in the blanks where it's unique to this table. It's a little messy, I've only, I haven't put a whole lot of time into it yet, but it, it basically works right now, so if I get it to the point where it's not too horrible. I'll put it out there and uh, put a video on it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye now.